This is a download from BBC Learning English. To find out more, visit our website. The importance of being earnest, episode two. Algernon has just asked his good friend Jack to explain why he calls himself Jack in the country, but Ernest in London. Jack says it's because he is the guardian of a girl called Cecily, who lives with him in the country. She looks up to him, and he feels he should behave well when he's with her. So. He pretends he has a younger brother called Ernest, so that when he comes up to London, he can enjoy himself. That, my dear Algy, is the whole truth. So, Ernest, you are a bumbriest. What on earth do you mean? You have invented a very useful younger brother called Ernest, so that you can come to London as often as you like. I have invented a sick friend called Bunbury, so that I can go to the country whenever I like. Bunbury is invaluable. For example, if Bunbury didn't have such bad health, I would have to have dinner with my aunt Lady Bracknell tonight, and I have no intention of doing that. Why not? Well, to begin with, I had dinner with her on Monday. Once a week is quite enough to eat with your own relations. Secondly, I know I will be seated next to Mary Farker, who always flirts with her own husband. Most unpleasant. Besides, I want to have dinner with you and talk about Bunburyism. I am not a Bunburyist. In fact, I think I am going to kill my brother Ernest. Cecily is a little too interested in him, and I strongly advise you to do the same with Mister, with your sick friend. I will not be separated from Bunbury. Ah, that must be my aunt now. Now, if I keep her busy for ten minutes, so you can propose to Gwendolyn, will you have dinner with me tonight? All right, Algy. <coughs> Lady Augusta Bracknell and Miss Gwendolyn Fairfax. A well-dressed elderly woman and her daughter. A pretty young lady enter the room. Good afternoon, dear Algernon. Oh, hello, Mister Worthing. Hello, lady. Now, Algernon, I'd like a nice cup of tea and one of those cucumber sandwiches you promised me. Certainly, Aunt Augusta. Oh, good heavens, Lane! Why are there no cucumber sandwiches? There were no cucumbers in the market this morning, sir. No cucumbers? No, sir. I am very sorry, Aunt Augusta. It doesn't matter, Algernon. Pour me some tea. Here you are. Thank you. Now, Algernon, about tonight, you will be seated next to Mary Farker. I'm afraid, Aunt Augusta, I won't be able to have dinner with you tonight. But why not, Algernon? Well, I have just heard that my poor friend Bunbury is very ill again. I'll have to go and see him. It's very strange.、Uh, this Mister Bunbury seems to have curiously bad health. I think it is time that he made up his mind whether he was going to live or die. And I would be very grateful if you could ask Mister Bunbury to please not be ill on Saturday, because I need you to organise my music at my soirée. I'll speak to him, Aunt Augusta, and I'm sure he'll be well by Saturday. But why don't we go next door to look at the program of music I've prepared? Oh, thank you, Algernon. It is very thoughtful of you. Algernon and his aunt go into the music room, leaving Jack and Gwendolyn alone. It has been a lovely day, Miss Fairfax. Please don't talk to me about the weather, Mr. Worthing. Whenever people talk about the weather, I'm sure they mean something else, and that makes me nervous. I do mean something else. I thought so, Miss Fairfax. Ever since I met you, I have admired you. Yes, I realised that. Actually, I have always been fascinated by you, even before we met. Really? Yes. I've always wanted to love someone called Ernest. That name inspires complete confidence. When Algernon first mentioned that he had a friend called Ernest, I knew I was destined to love you. 
You really love me, Gwendolyn? Passionately. But you don't really mean that you couldn't love me if my name wasn't Ernest. But your name is Ernest. Yes, I know. But what if it was something else? Do you mean you couldn't love me then? Personally, I don't think the name suits me. It suits you perfectly. But there are lots of other much nicer names. Jack, for instance, is a charming name. Jack? Oh, no, Jack does not have the same sound at all. It's not exciting. The only really safe name is Ernest. Gwendolyn, I must get christened at once. I mean, we must get married at once. Married, Mr Worthing? Well, surely... You know that I love you, and you led me to believe, Miss Fairfax, that you felt the same. I adore you, but you haven't proposed to me yet. Nothing has been said at all about marriage. Well, may I propose to you now? And so Jack kneels down and asks Gwendolyn to marry him. She accepts and Jack is still on his knees when Lady Bracknell returns. Mr Worthing, do get up. Oh, um... Uh, Mama, please leave us. Mr Worthing has not quite finished yet. Finished what, may I ask? I am engaged to Mr Worthing, Mama. Pardon me, you are not engaged to anyone. When you do become engaged, I or your father will tell you. A young girl should be surprised by an engagement, pleasantly or unpleasantly. It is not something she is allowed to arrange for herself. And now I would like to ask you a few questions, Mr Worthing. Gwendolyn, can you wait for me below in the carriage? Mama! Mama! <laughs> 